I'm probably a little bit too biased about Will. He's the guy. I'm telling you, he epitomizes everything. Will Bynum, born January 4th, 1983. Today's feature is a guy whose stunted growth story can also be written as a growth spurt story just the same. For a player under six feet to survive growing up in an environment like he did in Chicago, dealing with life in a big city as a young African American, crime and gang violence that tops other states yearly, and some of the toughest competition historically when it comes to point guards, he stayed focused off the court in his navigation through the cold streets while studying the game and dominating the competition as an individual when he stepped between the lines. Yet, leaving high school, he was highly underrated, like he feels all Chicago players are, because of the level of competition and players from smaller states and cities having an easier course building their resume. He didn't become a household basketball name leaving high school, decorated in McDonald's All-Americans, USA teams, and high major Division I schools clawing at him, but was able to secure a scholarship from Point Guard U Arizona, then Georgia Tech his final two years, finishing school finding himself underrated once again, going into a guard-heavy 2005 NBA draft where he went undrafted. I still remember watching Will Bynum in college as that guy that always seemed a diamond in the background to other players, who was unguardable one-on-one -on -one because of his elite ball control and crafty handling, something he was always known for throughout his career. He used that to blow by or freeze defenders just long enough to prepare for takeoff and finish with an advanced layup or above the rim highlight worthy dunk. Will Bynum would complete his dream of making the NBA, but it took an unexpected path overseas before Detroit GM Joe Dumars, who loved Bynum's game and fit in Detroit's hard hat lunch pail culture used to the underdog having to make something out of nothing gave him a long-term opportunity with the Pistons that lasted six of his eight total years in the league. He made it there, but it seemed underrated and overlooked followed closely behind, only once getting a starting opportunity, where he played well, but not well enough to become a priority at his position on the team. But dynamic excitement? Will Bynum had it, with the ball in his hands as one of the best ball handlers of his generation. His path led back overseas to China, a preseason stint with Atlanta and the D-League after the NBA, before Turkey where he was last recorded. For Bynum, the dream of making the NBA began young and ended accomplished, but here are three reasons Will Bynum continued being underrated, overlooked, and given less opportunity to be the player many feel he could have been. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Will Bynum is a listed 6-foot point guard, but much closer to anywhere from 5'9 to 5'11 that dealt with height being a question mark above his game all his life. From Chicago, Illinois, Bynum became serious about basketball around 9-10 years old, but as his mom remembers, hadn't put the ball down ever since. He dribbled all through the house and worked on jumping exercises tirelessly, preparing for bigger competition and showing up against it more often than not. He says he was dunking on an eight and a half foot rim at eight years old and playing in summer pro-am leagues in Chicago in high school filled with NBA players. Bynum would have 50 point games as a junior and senior but was still unranked outside the top 100 until before his senior year, he finally got to play AAU and after shot up to the top 30. Even that wasn't enough to remove the chip on his shoulder from being overlooked. He chose Arizona and Lou Dolson, playing his freshman year and eight games into his sophomore year before transferring to Georgia Tech to be closer to his mother who was falling ill. Stunt number one, schools of choice. The name of the game when choosing a college program to play for leaving high school, I believe, is to find that balance between a school that's in love with you and your game and has a clear plan for your career, mapped out with goals and honest expectations of where they see your college career with them headed, and potential as a pro. Also an estimation of the timeline they see for your caliber and if there's opportunity for you to fight and earn a starting spot at some point. 
Your fit at the place you choose can determine everything that happens in your life forever, so this is an important decision in every young hooper's life. Will Bynum is an example of a guy that didn't do his future draft stock much justice with the schools he chose. His senior year, he committed and signed with Arizona as a two-star recruit according to 247 and therefore recruited over and not prioritized at a school like Arizona. Going to a lesser named school and him averaging 16 to 20 his freshman year while showing he was much more could have been accomplished elsewhere but Arizona convinced him to join. With a pack roster, guys like junior guard and Arizona legend Jason Gardner and freshman guard Salim Stoudemire in the same undersized score first combo guard mold as Bynum were given more opportunity out the gate. Stoudemire instantly became the third leading scorer on the team while Gardner was an NBA prospect who should have left after his junior year. Instead, he returned, meaning another possible year playing the bench for Bynum. The following year, the Wildcats added Hassan Adams and solidified Arizona was over as an opportunity for Will to play enough to build a draft-able resume. After eight games as a sophomore, he left to be closer to his ailing mom and joined Georgia Tech where he'd have to sit out that season and watch his old team make the Elite Eight. At Georgia Tech, Bynum battled once again with a heavy guard roster in BJ Elder, Jared Jack and Marvin Lewis and found himself coming off the bench until his senior year. Jack and Elder still on the roster. Bynum if went to a different school where he could be himself and not have to sit behind higher profiled guards would have been drafted. He was that good. Instead, he didn't and uncertainty followed and took lead of his career. Stunt number two, a one-on-one -on -one guy. Out of Georgia Tech, he was just offensive, one-on-one -on -one player, just wanted to have the ball in his hand and do all the tricks. In four years in college, Bynum saw limited time, never playing more than 28 minutes a game. He used that time to get right to work and show he could be a scorer the defense couldn't stay in front of and crowd favorite. But as Joe Dumars said, at the time Bynum was showing signs of being one-dimensional, causing many teams going into the draft to label him just a one-on-one -on -one guy. They weren't 100% wrong, seeing as Bynum didn't offer much in assists, shooting, nor defense. He went undrafted and signed with Boston for Summer League, but didn't make the final roster. Instead, the Warriors gave him a few 10-day contracts toward the end of the season, an opportunity to stay for the remainder of the season. With no offers during the early offseason, Bynum decided to sign overseas in Israel, where he not only learned how to be more of a team guy, but was in the right place, right time, as Joe Dumars and the Pistons were recruiting Bynum's teammate Omari Caspi. They took notice of Bynum and eventually signed him July 2008, after two successful seasons in Israel, winning the Premier League Championship and the Finals MVP. He was finally firm in the NBA for the next six years, but plagued by lack of development outside his offensive skills and once again sitting behind more invested in guards. He was traded to the Celtics in 2014, then waived 10 days later. Stunt number three, more of the same. For Will Bynum, being counted out and underrated continued to be the theme of his story in the NBA. With the Warriors, there was little chance him staying on there as Baron Davis and Monta Ellis would begin their era as the Warriors backcourt of the now and future, and then in Detroit when Bynum got there were just entering the Rodney Stuckey era where they attempted to hand him the keys after Chauncey Billups' departure. They were highly invested in Stuckey and that lasted until both left the team in 2014. Stuckey was the obvious next franchise point guard and Bynum was a pet project for Dumars. He continued to be more of an offensive threat than creative for his teammates and it cost him not offering much else. He was a small guard the size of the point guard position but had a shooting guards game yet couldn't shoot from deep at 27% for his career to go with 3 assists and .7 steals a game. Opportunity came from time to time, but it always asked, what more do you have for me? And Bynum had more of the same, but this time it wasn't enough. 
He journeyed overseas to China, back to the G League and Turkey before being a consultant for the Pistons later on. All in all, Will Bynum did what he set out to, but circumstances didn't allow him that opportunity to be his true self in the league. Either way, he had an outstanding career seeing where he came from, how it started, and the amount he went through to play for 8 years. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.